Hey everybody, this is round four of my playthrough of Thistletop Delve in the Rise of the Rune Lords adventure of the Pathfinder adventure card game. There's a global rule in effect that says that items and weapons are... the difficulty to acquire them is increased by two. So I've got a little reminder for myself up there. And we know that the villain is in the only location left... And that is the Warrens. Everything else has been closed. And we got closed closure pretty early. This is our timer deck. Feeling pretty good about that. And um, I had to draw back up to Valeros's hand. Don't love his hand. He's got a weird item, a leather armor, a wooden shield, and a light crossbow. Which isn't exactly his specialty. I mean, it's it's not the worst thing in the world, but... That's that's not really what I need right now, to be honest. Not going up against the villain. Sioni doesn't have much of a better hand, to be honest. She's got a bunch of blessings and some armor, some, some more armor, and an ally. So, not great, really. This is not, not, not a good place to be going into the Warren where there is a villain. So, um, it is... Uh, Sione's turn, maybe? Yes, it is her turn because she spent a an invisibility spell to get away from Nualia. So it's definitely, uh, it was her turn. So it is now Valeros's turn. And that's okay. Like I say, I don't love his hand, so that's a problem. Um, however, technically, I should say, Technically, they are both still in the former location. Um, well, that's that's fine. So, okay, I'm going to send Valeros to the Warrens. He is not going to explore. I'm going to send Sioni to the Warrens. She is going to give Valeros the magic leather armor. This is because you can uh, recharge this to reduce combat, and that's great for him. Like, really good. She, it's useless to her. She's not proficient with armor. Uh, well, actually, I shouldn't say it's useless. It's just it won't be as useful to her. Um, if you are proficient with light armor, you may recharge this card when you reset your hand. So, yeah, it's better for him, so she's given it over to him. She's got arcane armor. That's all we need. Uh, she's got a bunch of blessings, which are useless against Noalia, because Noalia has that weird thing where if you play blessings against her, um, she she increases in difficulty. But we can discard these to use Sioni's arcane uh, bolt, or whatever it is that she fires out of her fingertips uh, without without actually having a spell card for it. So we're just going to dive right in. Rat Swarm, we've been here before. This is an 8 difficulty. Um, so yeah, she'll, she'll, I guess, zap the rat swarm with her little arcane bolt that I was talking about by getting rid of a blessing card that gives her a d12 and a d6. Valeros is in the same location, granting her an additional d4. She's also proficient or whatever at arcane skill. She got two ranks in Arcane, I guess. So she only needs a six across all these big die. Um, so we've got a one. That's not a great start. Really bad start, actually. Four. Um, okay, we're still not out of the woods, though. Because that's only a seven. Oh, we are out of the woods. Because she can't possibly roll less than one. She rolled an eight. Um, so she has stamped out all of the rats. Every single one of them. By, by at least four, yes. So there's no special conditions in effect when killing those rats. She's just killed the rats. Okay, cool. I feel okay about that. Draw back up to six. Uh, six. I guess that's not six. Oh yeah, because she gave one to Valeros. Six. Wow, still no attack spell. Okay, that's fine. So there's blessings to be discarded. Okay, uh, ticking over the timer card. Going back over to Valeros. As I say, I don't love his hand, to be honest. But 
Are there special conditions here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. There are, but it doesn't matter. When you encounter a monster, put a random monster from the top of... From, from the box onto the top of another uh, open location deck. There are no more open locations. This is why I saved the Warrens for last. Succeed to close. Succeed at uh, Acrobatics. Decks, six. Yeah, okay. All right, cool. So nothing terribly important there. And Skeleton Horde is a barrier. Each character at an open location summons and encounters an ancient skeleton henchman. And then banish this card. Okay. So I need an ancient skeleton henchman. These are not as scary as I believe I thought they were. The word ancient, of course, makes it seem really bad, but there are only eight uh, difficulty in combat. Uh, I don't think they even have that many special abilities or any. If the check to defeat has the slashing or piercing, okay, that could be bad. It increases by three. Okay. Well, Sioni's... I'm going to fight one first, I guess. And so she will discard a Blessing card to use her Arcane Bolt thing. Um, they're in the same location, so Valeros is, as far as I can tell, allowed to help her. Uh, eight, so two, so I need six across all these die again. Uh, that's one. That's a six. So I don't even have to roll the other, the Arcane die. So Sioni succeeds. And now... Valeros is going to go to battle with this thing, and I have no idea how. So, he's got a light crossbow. Uh, for a combat check, reveal this card to roll dex plus a d8. Oh, well, that's 2d8. If you're proficient with weapons, you may discard this card to add another d4. I kind of want to do that, except that... Yeah, you know what? I don't think it's worth it. I think I'm going to recharge this magic this magic leather armor. Yeah, okay, so here's what I'm doing. I'm revealing this card, which gives him a dexterity bonus of a, or another d8. His dexterity is d8, so he rolls a d8 twice. Three, four, so that's seven. So he um, takes one point of damage. Except he's got this fancy magical armor, which he is now going to recharge to negate that damage. Actually, you know what? He doesn't even have to do that. He could instead recharge his non-fancy armor. Recharge this card to reduce by one. Yeah, that's what he'll do. So... That wasn't all that bad, really. And now he doesn't have to discard. That's the advantage. Because discarding it means death, eventually. Okay. So that was a barrier. The Skeleton Horde barrier. And they have uh, succeeded that. So, Or they've done the, the thing. Uh, and it says to banish this card. So there we go. We've, we've fought uh, to varying degrees of success. But we've taken our... Our, our punches, and we're good to go. And actually, what what was this? The the shield. Recharge this card. Oh, okay, no. Yeah, leather armor was the right choice there. So we're going to tick over a timer card, move Sioni to the forefront, and she needs to draw... Does she need to draw up? What? How did she get down? Oh, she expended that, so no. She does not get to draw up at the beginning of her turn. She gets to draw up at the end of her turn. So she has a, um, she's got some options here if she encounters. I mean, she could also do a detect, detect magic, but I'm not entirely sure what good that would do. So, because, I mean, if it's the villain, it's the villain. I mean, it's, it's not the villain, but it is a henchman. Okay. So, before the encounter, Liri Akenja deals 1d4 minus 1 fire damage. And it's a nine combat scenario. So this is 1d4. One, one uh, minus one is zero. So no damage is taken, which is great. And now we need to discard something. I guess it's going to be the sage. So that we can cast our innate spell casting power. 
which is a d12 and a d6. And of course, there is that plus two bonus for her arcane skill. She needs to make a, so a seven between these two die. One. Ten. I had a feeling. I don't know why. Um, cool. So that, that kills little Lyri Akinja. Nice try, you evil wizard. You're no match for a sorceress. Okay. Um, that wasn't a blanket statement. Wizards are great. Just that particular wizard wasn't a match for Sioni. Okay, so two, four, so she needs to draw up, which is exactly what I want. Um, because finally, oh my gosh, uh, finally she's got an attack spell, and that's what I've really been wanting. Of course, now we're in this weird, precarious situation, um, where no matter what, if Sioni takes damage, then at the end of her turn, she'll have to draw up, back up to six, presumably, and, and then she'll die. So, this is a very weird sort of end game scenario in Pathfinder card game, I feel, where if you're doing, if you're playing the game and cycling through your cards, you are also necessarily going to die at the end because you have no draw deck left just because you've been using your resources. And I don't feel like that's the intent. So that's her deck. That's the end of her turn. So now I can put Valeros back to the top. Tick over a timer card. And I'm, I'm trying to remember if Nualia had an ability where she was going to harm everyone at this location or not. So I think I might just let this turn go. Tick over another card and move Sioni to one of the closed locations for a moment. She might, she might even explore, actually. just to see if she can get another card into her deck. Arcane Armor. Um, so check to acquire that. Four. She needed a four. This is not an item or a weapon, so the, the difficulty does not increase. So she's just gained some Arcane Armor for herself, which is really good. Because now she's got seven cards in her hand. The problem there is that um, that's too many. So technically she has to discard, but she's a sorceress. She can recharge. So I'm going to have her recharge her detect magic spell, even though I don't actually care what's next in the deck. It looks like it's a short sword. So actually that's, that is good to know, honestly. And so, so she could actually acquire that short sword as well if, if, if she needed to. So that's her turn. And now she's got at least a health point sort of in her draw deck. Okay, drawing, or er, ticking over the timer deck. It's Valeros's turn now, and he's up against a skeleton. Skeleton is immune. Skeleton slashing increases by three. And this isn't really Valeros's strong suit. What can he do with this card? Anything? Nothing. There's really no way to get rid of this uh, this stuff, apparently. Interesting. Okay, well, you know what? If we get rid of that magic armor... So there's no way to get rid of this weapon. Once it's in your hand, it is 100% in your hand. Oh, wait. If you are proficient with weapons, you may discard this card to add a d4. Perfect. Okay, so it's going to be 2d4... No, 2d8 and a d4 to try to get... 8, 9, 10, 11, and then we're, gonna, and we're discarding this, except that we don't have to discard because it's Valeros. He can recharge his weapons. So, 4. That's a good start. 2, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That doesn't quite do it. It doesn't defeat that skeleton. But I can recharge his leather armor to draw a fresh sort of fresh hand, more or less. Potion of Hiding and a Mace. Well, the Mace is better than nothing, I guess, because at least it is melee-based. It's not a bastard sword, but it's better than a, a crossbow. Uh, so this skeleton is not defeated. He goes back into the deck, 
and then I shuffle that location deck. So who knows what's going on now? I mean, who knows what who 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 could have told what was going on before? Like nobody. But it's now Sioni's turn. I'm starting to get a little bit nervous about the timer deck, to be honest. Um and I'm also thinking, I wonder if I really want her to be wasting time there. I don't think I do. I want her to come back here and explore. And of course it's Noalia. Before the encounter, Noalia deals 1d4 to each locate to each character in each location. That's a four, of course it is. So that's four cards that everyone has to discard. Um, and is that non-reducible? No, it's four. Oh, but it's before the encounter, and so I'm saying it's non-reducible. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of one, two, three, four cards. So I've got some armor, and I've got a force missile. So unfortunately, unless we beat Nualia right now, Sioni is dead because she has no she has one card in her draw deck. Um and that's if you go to draw from your draw deck and there's no card there, then uh you are dead. And um Valeros has no cards in his hand. So, this is an interesting and terrible place to be. Okay. So let's I mean Let's try it, right? Like, we can't... We'll find out what happens. Okay, Force Missile. I can recharge this to roll Arcane plus 2d4. Arcane plus 2d4. Arcane plus 2d4. So that's Arcane plus 2d4. And then, of course, Valeros is in the same location, so he adds yet another uh, d4. So, the first check against Noalia has to be a, 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 a 10 on, on 3d4 and a d12. It's 2, 3, 7. So I need a 3 or better on this d12. That's a 12, so... Okay, the first battle against Noalia succeeds. Now I have to discard the arcane armor so that I can cast the arcane bolt thing that Sioni does without cards. So that's a d12 and a d6. A d4 from Valeros again, and a plus two bonus for, being, for, for using arcane. So Noalia, this one needs to be a 12, to a total of 12. One. Not a great start. So I, I'm, I'm going to need 11 between these two die. Two. All right. So now I need a nine on this d12. And it's a 10. Well, that's kind of brilliant because I think, yep, 10 plus, I mean, that's 15. So that's, uh, that's exactly what we needed to defeat Noelia. For each blessing played in a deck, that doesn't matter. We didn't do that. Brilliant. We we defeated the final villain. We've uh, we've we've completed this this um, the scenario, and in fact, the entire burnt offering adventure. As um, as a reward for defeating this, we get a Sahedrin medallion, which is some special loot in, in the box. And then we also get a new card feat. Card feat is here. So, for instance, I could, I, I could increase her number of spells to four, for instance, which I think is probably what I'll do. And Valeros can increase his weapons to six or his blessings to four items to three or whatever. But first, let's take a look at this loot. So this is the loot card, Sahedrin Medallion. It is Accessory Magic Sahedrin. Discard this card to reduce damage dealt to you by four. 
Succeed at an Arcane or Divine 9 check to recharge this card instead of discarding it. That is best suited for, Sio for Sione, so she'll take that. So that's the Pathfinder Adventure card game. I hope this has been, uh, I don't know, enjoyable or somewhat educational. I highly recommend this game. I, I think it's a really, really fun game. It's really hard. <laughs> uh, you have to make hard choices, and it's, it gets very stressful. The timer deck will give you nightmares, and, and the characters are great. I mean, they really feel... It feels like an RPG experience without all the, uh, the role play or, or the storytelling. It's just... I mean, there's still storytelling, but it's done through cards and through choices. And that's, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. So if you've been thinking about purchasing it, I highly recommend it. There's a second edition out now, so you can, you can get a slightly different card game. But, uh, and I haven't played that one yet, but um, the first edition is what I've been playing, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, I've had it for several years now, and I just keep coming back to it. And I don't even have that many decks for it, really. It's, it's, but it, it, it continues to be fun. And there are lots of different characters to play. So I may next time play through the Perils of the Lost Coast. It's a little mini adventure that came in the box. There are three scenarios. And I might, I'll just play different characters maybe to see how they, how, see how they, they go. Um, so I'll do that either, I don't know, next time or sometime in the future. Thanks for watching.